yeah. Look at that. Give me up more applause when I say the city I'm in. Yeah. How many parents in here by applause? Parents? I think most parents agree there are consequences of behavior. That's why I think it's okay to spank other people's children. <laughs> See some kid tomorrow acting like a brat, give him a little finger snap on the noggin. <laughs> His mom goes, See what happens when you act like that in public? Strangers spank you. <laughs> now there's a line. I don't know why they call spanking. Corporal punishment is what they call it, which I don't get. Because I'm going, personally, if you're a spanker, that's the wrong rank. I'm thinking like a drill sergeant, you know, call it a cadence. Left, 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 right, left. Talk ten times to clean your room. Guess you won't be sitting soon. Left, 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 right, left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My wife and I, we're trying to figure out the parenting thing, you know, because we had parents and we know they did it wrong. <laughs> figure it out. I think we'll all do things a little differently. I know the thing I'm trying to do differently than my mother, I'm trying to discipline my daughters differently because my mom, I don't know if you had a mother like this or if you are a mother like this, my mom's method of disciplining me as a kid was just to yell as loud as she could, ah! and I would do the exact opposite, ah! even less behavior. Ah! She might have been cheering me on. <laughs> like a frazzled mother cheer. Did you just hear what I said? Did you just hear me? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear me? Am I talking to myself? Am I talking to myself? You get the drug me nuts. You drug me nuts. You drug me nuts. And don't tell me I was unstable before I had you. Well, my, my daughter wants a new, uh, she wants a bike horn, which, uh, have you shot for bike horns lately? Yeah, go out shot for a bike horn. It's pretty much, I don't know how long they've been doing that noise. That's it. That's all you got, bike horn people? You'd think with the te technology now, like, bike horns could be cool, like, move, something like that, you know? That's it. I'm not sure that's going to help at all. You know, semi pulls out. <laughs> what happened, sir? Well, I was pulling out and I heard this kid with asthma. <laughs> uh, what happened after that? <laughs> trying to teach her how to ride a bike, which is difficult because of the way my father taught me, because this is something I don't want to pass on from generation to generation. This is actual footage. I'm four years old. My dad takes me, puts him on the bike. He grabs the front of the handlebars, the back of the banana seat. Because that's, that's the era I am from. And then he just explains to me, very simply, how to ride a bike. Pedal! Pedal the bike, the game's almost back on! Pedal that thing! I crash, come back, get back on! I don't want to! It's like, it's only grass, like grass makes a difference with that bar down the middle, Dad. There's a bar that goes down the middle of the boy's bike. I'm four years old. I don't get it. The only thing I have to say about the bar that goes down the middle of the boy's bike is... You won't give it up. You can do it. Come on. Pedal. Pretty soon all the neighborhood dads come over. They're all giving me heaves. Let me give it a try. They're just going for distance at this point. <laughs> I turned into a lawn game of some sort. <laughs> See, you can hit with a jar. <laughs> I can't believe after that, I was actually dumb enough after that to come home from school, ask if I could sign up for swimming lessons. <laughs> swimming, I can teach you for free. Swim. <laughs> oh, don't let that bike sink. <laughs> There's a brilliant method, Dad. How many people have ever been drowning in panic and all of a sudden you go, Oh, I get it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. 
I'm actually afraid of water. I think that's a legitimate fear. If you've ever been underwater, it makes you, this is something to fear. Water is. I was a lifeguard in high school, though, which may seem like an odd combination, but I was a lifeguard at a public pool. Because at a public pool, you don't even have to get wet at a public pool, because you have pool checks. Remember those? You blow your whistle, you line up, everybody lines up around the edge of the pool, and then you just look for people who may have drowned. <laughs> and even if somebody's drowning during all the ruckus, you still don't have to get wet, because next to your chair, you got this 15 foot pole. And you're like, take the pole! Take the pole! Because I found out if you knock them out, they float. Then you can just hook them and pull them in. <laughs> to get my lifeguarding certificate, I had to swim two miles. Laps in a pool. Which makes you go, how lost are you going to be? <laughs> and the other question is, I don't know why you have to swim two miles. If, someone's, if you're drowning two miles away from shore, <laughs> meet me halfway! <laughs> Whatever you did to get out there, do it this way! That's called swimming, idiot! Swim! I'm gonna swim too much. I'll save you! Where'd you go? You wanna be saved, you gotta at least wait for me. I know this, uh, my kids are lucky to have names. I'll tell you that. I don't know if you've ever named a baby, but we'd sit down and have these little name conferences. Uh, how about Audrey? Mm, I knew an Audrey once and didn't like her. <laughs> how about Sally? <laughs> don't even say. <laughs> I went to high school. <laughs> like every name had some sort of a bad association attached to it. People were like, what are you gonna name your baby? I'm, I don't know, but I got a list of people I hate. <laughs> The amazing thing is, have you seen ultrasounds lately? Like, I, I can't believe in the eight years since we had our first baby, the ultrasounds are like, I can't believe how much you can, it's amazing what you can see. It's, it's like, I'm not there. Oh, yes, he's a boy, and he's going to be a lawyer. And uh, there's his little briefcase right there. He's going to live at home until he's 32 and pays off his student loan, and this is going to make his fiance break up with him. But he'll eventually leave. And, uh, I can tell all that by the way he's sucking his thumb. <laughs> this doesn't, I want any uh, new fa any fathers to be in here? Fathers to be, I know that's a stupid phrase, but uh, it's true. There are fathers to be, they're just not going to give birth. Uh, <laughs> okay, I want to talk about the father's role uh, during the pregnancy. First, uh, and this is pretty much when she's going to give, right before she's going to give birth. Try to remain calm. Try to remain calm, and this, will, this goal is rel relatively easy to accomplish since you are not in any pain. So. And then what you do is you wrap your wife in a shower curtain and place her in the trunk of the car for her own safety. <laughs> this way she can't reach any vital instruments when you're driving. And then have your wife start panting to give her the illusion that she's in control of the situation, and if you're lucky, she'll hyperventilate and pass out. Now, if you see the top of the baby's head appear, gently push it back with a plunger. <laughs> now, wait and let a professional do it. Then, once you're at the hospital, place the phrases if you've written on an index card where they can easily be seen by you, but not your wife. And then recite them repeatedly in a supportive tone. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. That's normal. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. That's normal. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. The emergency what? Scalpel blood! Ah! <laughs> I the end of that. Love the car seats, man. <laughs> you taken a baby home in a car seat before? Uh, we took our baby home in a, it was required that we buckle her in a car seat, which proved difficult with a baby the size of a G.I. Joe doll. <laughs> 
Our baby was three months premature, and when we took it home, the baby was, it was 12 inches tall. You put the seatbelt on him, this can't be safe. It's like going across her neck. <laughs> Seemed even more dangerous as they're driving, it's straddling her throat. I can't see how that's right or it's a requirement. Uh, my mother brought me home on her lap. She drove the car home with me. <laughs> mm. But we got our baby home, and immediately introduced her to the cat. This is not a toy! <laughs> I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna bring this over here and set this up. Um, I've actually, I was reading the book, well, my wife was reading the book. She has this book that's like this thick called What to Expect When You're Expecting. And they've made it like you can't finish it in nine months. I'm not sure. <laughs> It's like, isn't this what doctors are hired for, to read thick books? I'm not sure. So I've come up uh, with a little... Um, uh, the thing is, why spend all that time when you can just hear a comedian recite it for you? So um, here's my what to expect when you're expecting a nervous breakdown, or exactly how fat and depressed are you going to get? Okay. <laughs> this is what's going to happen to you the first nine months of your pregnancy. All right? The first month, week one, life is wonderful, because you have no idea that you're pregnant. <laughs> Week two, you think you have gas. Week three, you stop eating at your favorite Chinese restaurant. Week five, you buy a home pregnancy test. Week six, you buy seven more home pregnancy tests. Your husband comes home and asks, what's with all these popsicle six? They got no jokes. Week eight, you visit your husband in the hospital after he faints and hits his head on the coffee table. <laughs> the third month, your husband buys a home pregnancy test. It's negative he's not pregnant. The fourth month, week 13, you wonder why hotels don't have a 13th floor and you fear for your baby's life. Week 14, constipation. Week 15, fiber. Week 16, diarrhea. The fifth month, Week 17, your mother visits. Week 18, migraine. <laughs> Week 19, you can no longer fit into your jeans, so you buy a tent. <laughs> it's denim. This way you can wear it for homeschooling until your child graduates. <laughs> Week 20, you go back to your favorite Chinese restaurant and strangers rub your bed instead of the Buddhas. <laughs> It's a belly. It's a belly. <laughs> Did you rub my belly? Yes, I rubbed your belly. The sixth month, week 21, you visit relatives in Fairbanks, Alaska. It's 120 below zero. You're hot. <laughs> week 22, you walk across Alaska naked. <laughs> week 23, your belly button pops off. Week 24, you have pain in your back that has nothing to do with your mother-in-law. <laughs> Week 25, nothing fits. Even your tent feels tight across the chest. Week 26, your husband won't wipe that stupid grin off his face. Week 27, due to the numbness in your hands, it doesn't sting when you slap him across the face. Week 28, you go to bed, but your legs decide to jog. The eighth month, week 29, you visit your favorite Chinese restaurant and vomit in the goldfish pond. <laughs> the manager is visibly upset. You know, read the sign, no feeding fish! <laughs> week 30, Braxton Hicks contractions followed by Elmer Fudd contractions. <laughs> week 31, you've now gained 30 extra pounds and can only drive a car in straightaways. <laughs> week 32, you're reading a funny book and pee on yourself. <laughs> the manager of the Chinese restaurant asks you to leave. <laughs> the ninth month, week 33, you contact Compassion International because you're lactating enough to feed a third world country. You paint the nursery 47 times, 47 different colors, then clean each fiber of carpeting individually. 
Weeks 36. Yikes, it's not gas. The manager of the Chinese restaurant asks you to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. All right. That's a legitimate fear. I don't know why. We like to be scared in this country. I don't know why. Here's eight bucks, scare me. <laughs> go to scary movies, which is really an odd thing. I'm flipping through the channels the other night. I came across the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but here's my question. See if you track with me on this. I'm thinking, I'm sitting there watching a little bit, and I'm going, why aren't there any Protestant horror movies? <laughs> They're always Catholic. <laughs> they never have a Protestant guy, right? You never see a daughter, her head spins around, or you better run and get the Methodist pastor, okay? That's <laughs> never happening. No, it's always, get the priest! He has special water, as they got holy. Because in the movies, they always do the holy water. <laughs> ah! They sprinkle holy water, and then the demon-possessed person's like, yeah! Like, we should have holy water at every church. And just kind of flick people as they walk in. Ah! Keep an eye on those two. Yeah, watch them. Watch them. Yeah. <laughs> But they got no Protestants in the horror movies. You know, probably because you get two Protestant guys, you know, walk into a house, the walls are dripping blood, there's a guy running around the ceiling, they'd be like, we better call a priest. Because, uh, you know, this was not in the Baptist manual. I tell you, I don't, uh, that guy's going to town up there. Yeah, he's. <laughs> All right. No Protestant horror movies. Well, because Protestants have a whole different system, you know. A priest shows up, he's in full garb, he's got special water, he's got, he's got all kinds of stuff, there's smoke, and he's got a whole book of Latin. Um, da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum, it's like, which apparently annoys the day. Everyone just stop speaking Latin, you know. Yeah. That's enough as Dr. Doofenshmirtz. All right. Carry the plan apart, what are you? Anyway, uh, you gotta be under 15 to get that. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, so, because I think Protestant, well, a Protestant horror movie would go like this. Okay, ready? Uh, yeah, they're rolling. Action! Come on in the name of Jesus! We need more! <laughs> Improvise, keep, we're still rolling! We need two hours, idiot! Get a priest in here! Who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I love that though. You ever watch a scary movie at home by yourself and afterwards you have to flip on the home shopping network just to rinse out the atmosphere of the room? <laughs> <laughs> I need a plastic kitty or a ceramic kitty. That's cute. Oh. <laughs> I do this. If you, watch, you ever watch a scary movie at somebody's house, right? You're at somebody's house. You watch a scary movie. You go to drive home. You get in your car before you leave. If you're like me, I give my back seat one of these psycho sweeps, you know. <laughs> Make sure no escape mental patients have crawled in my back seat. <laughs> Which is really stupid. I'm thinking, what if there's somebody back there actually stick my finger in his nose? Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm looking for you. <laughs> you're, you get out. You scare me. <laughs> kind of, you don't scare people and then rob them. It's, get out. I don't know what, you'd, what would you say to somebody? <laughs> yeah, anyway, anyway, and then uh, yeah, uh, and then some of us uh, we're, dr we're driving, we'll start driving home, then we'll be like, oh, I forgot to check my back seat. <laughs> so we flick our dome lights on, trying to swing our heads back there. Go, ah, ah, ah. I explain that to a cop when he pulls you over. You know, you're weaving pretty badly. I was looking for a murderer. I think he's hiding in my back seat. Be careful. He's jumping from side to side. So be careful. He's, he's tricky. He's a tricky, tricky man. <laughs> I still do this if I'm home alone. If my uh, wife takes our two children and goes and visits my mother-in-law. Which is a whole other horror movie in itself. But... <laughs> No, I'm just, I do the mother-in-law jokes. <laughs> Square. Okay, so uh, my wife will go and take the kids and visit mom-in-law, and uh, I'll be home alone in bed, 
if I'm scared, what I do is I tuck my feet and my head under the covers. Because then he can't get me. Yeah, yeah some psycho's going to break in the room. <laughs> His feet are tucked under. How do I penetrate this claw shield he has about him? I have been defeated. I will be the laughing stock of all the boogeymen. Now, there's a phrase we need to really get rid of. Boogeyman? Is that even... Your dancing is frightening. I'm a boogeyman. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, I was in a dance company. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my wife pulls this on me. We'll just be falling asleep. Because uh, we sleep in the same bed. That's the cool thing about marriage. Your wife gets to sleep over. So, <laughs> we'll be falling asleep. And all of a sudden, my wife's like, listen, what? Shh. Listen. What? Shh. Only I can talk if I hear it. Shh. Listen. <laughs> I don't hear anything. I don't either. <laughs> this guy's really good. <laughs> Go find him. <clears throat> and if we're honest, most of us do this. If we watch a scary movie downstairs and we have to walk upstairs, you always end up running those last few steps. <laughs> I think there's a ghost chasing me! Get out of the way, there's a ghost chasing me! Move, get out of the way! I'm being chased by a ghost! If you're running from something invisible, how do you know you're faster? <laughs> ghost could have been waiting at the top of the stairs. Boo! Ah! I didn't see you because I'm a ghost! Have you met Father Murphy? <laughs> He's got the water. Not sure that works on a ghost, I don't know. Not sure, I didn't see the movie. Move on. Actually, uh, grew up in a small town originally. I uh, originally, like I grew up more than one place. <laughs> I grew up in one town, went to another, didn't grow at all. And so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, grew up in a small town, nearly died in a small town. Nearly lost my life in, uh, well, outside of Grafton, North Dakota. That's where I was. I was playing, this was, uh, I think, two years ago. I, was, I had a near-death experience. I had a near-death experience in Grafton, North Dakota. I was there. <laughs> and no, that's not actually happened. What happened was, it was February. Now, have you ever been to, anybody been to North Dakota before in February? Uh, you, that's pretty much, okay, IQ of this whole place, huge, huge. Uh, I was there in February. It, it was like 90 below. I'm not even making that up. Like 90 below. It's the only place I've ever been to. You can, ice, you can get an ice cream headache from breathing. Walk outside. Ah! What's the matter? I'm breathing! We don't breathe here. People think we're uptight. We just don't breathe in the winter. And, and while I was there, a lady died of exposure. That means she went outside and it killed her. Now, I get this all the time when I travel. Where are you from? California. You people are nuts! Okay, we might be nuts in California, but at least the air there doesn't kill you. Okay, it can. But at least we can see it coming. <laughs> we can turn and run away from the air. It's a big surprise attack in North Dakota. And you ask them, how can you stand this cold? And they tell you the same thing every time. How can you stand this cold? Do you get used to it? That's a lie. You do not get used to that kind of weather. I know, because when I was there, I got pulled over by a cop. Neither one of us got out of the car. <laughs> step out of the car, please. You step out of the car! You step out. You get out! Step out of the car. Look out! Oh, I got the vent! Can you hear me through the vent? Just slow down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 
and I looked it up. I found this fun fact out when I was in North Dakota. There are only 680,000 people in the entire state. If they all moved to one area of California, they would only be a city. <laughs> which would be the smart thing to do. The whole state of North Dakota should just relocate together as one city somewhere warm. And we could still make use of North Dakota. We could build a big fence around it, make it a prison. <laughs> yeah, that way, exactly. We could literally have a state penitentiary. <laughs> Where's your brother? He got seven years in Minot, so. Oh, man. That's brutal. So, yeah, and then what happened was I was on my way to uh, Grafton, North Dakota at this time in the, like February, and I'm on a two-lane highway. I'm passing a semi. As I'm going to get back in my lane, I hit a little patch of ice. I'm spinning out of control in front of the semi, and he's honking at me. <laughs> like I'm goofing off. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Look what I can do, trucker man, try this! woo You can't do this! Ah! And a semi honking out to me sounds like, dead, dead, you're dead, dead, you're dead, dead, you're dead, dead. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> except, uh, except they don't do this, do they? They don't honk like that. They, they honk like this, which is so stupid. I mean, <laughs> my dad was a trucker. I'm like, what are you, what are you like, pulling on a rope? What kind of ancient cowboy technology is this? You got like a duck in the back with a rope tied to its leg. Ring, ring. That wasn't a very good duck, was it? Oh, yeah. There we go. There you go. Just, uh, oh yeah. Just, I can dance. I can do Donald Duck. Hey, boys and girls, Mickey Mouse. I got it all down. <laughs> oh man. So what happened actually was, uh, this, well, this is the true part of the story. I don't normally share this. No, that actually happened. That's, well, he didn't, you know, there was no duck and stuff like that. But, um, but my car slid like it was going towards the ditch there. And I don't, I don't know if you've ever been to the Midwest or the whatever you call the Northwest or whatever North Dakota would be, the barren part of the country that we live in. I don't know if you've ever been to that area, but their ditches, their ditches are like cliffs. I don't know what the thinking was. It's like, we want them to crash the car right here. We just want to just save the corn. That's, we don't want them rolling and damaging the crops. Just build a moat between the road and the corn. Save the corn, that's the idea. And uh, so I'm heading towards this ditch cliff and uh, my car, as I'm spinning, it just stops right at the edge, and my, the tail of my car is just sticking out just in the road enough. It looked like the truck was going to, it looked like he was going to hit the back of my car and swing me up underneath his um, belly. I don't know what you call the underside of a truck. Anyway, it looked bad. And uh, <laughs> even, you know, because you don't think of a truck as, could you, could you, belly? And it doesn't even think that, yeah. It's not really. Anyway, but... Uh, and then the truck was just like, it looked like he was just going like this. Like you couldn't really, trucks aren't like, you know, maneuverable. So it was just like, I can lean a little. <laughs> and he came by and just, whoosh, he sliced the edge of my bumper with his step. Whoosh, that was it. Now, I don't, even, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you thought it was your last moment on earth. And then it's not. You feel kind of ripped off. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was gonna die. I thought I was gonna die. Just, just pay for your gum, sir. And just, you know, for your gum. Someone has to hear my story. Because uh, see, insurance companies, uh, well, the insurance companies will only pay for physical damage. You get nothing. I, don't, I thought I was gonna die. You get nothing for that. We need physical evidence. Take a picture of my shorts. Look here. I, I thought I was gonna die! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <That's sad. laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm uh, from a little town in Nebraska. Originally is where I'm from, Dakota City, Nebraska. 
town of 1,503 people, 25,437 German shepherds. It's my impression of Dakota City in the evening. Ho, 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 ho. Thank you. Thank you for applauding the death of a dog. Thank you. I don't make that up, unfortunately. This back in the day, you could actually do it in a small town and get away with it. My dad shot one of the neighbor's dogs. My older brother shot one of their older... My older... My dad shot one of the neighbor's dogs. My dad shot one of the neighbor's dogs. My older brother shot one of the neighbor's dogs. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying they stopped barking. That's all I'm saying. That's, you know... If it's their dog in their yard and they can't hear it, they're probably going to notice it when you shoot it. You know. <coughs> Here, gunshot woke me up. Don't worry, it won't happen tomorrow. <laughs> it's two in the morning. What is this dog so desperately trying to communicate at two in the morning? What's he out there saying? Help me, I'm trapped in the yard. I can't get out. Give me out. Give me out. Oh, 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 oh. Shut up, dog. You've actually opened your window, yelled at the neighbor's dog, shut up! Like the dog's down there, my bad. That, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize the time, because I am a dog, and I don't have a watch. I, it's not the kind of dog I am. I'm not a watch dog. No, you get his attention. He'll be right at your window. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And the other dogs in the neighborhood, they hear him in the distance and join in. Help him! Help him! Give me out, 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 out. Christmas choir is going to be one short. No, don't shoot your neighbor's dog. Do you need to say that? So then you get a dead dog in the front lawn with a bullet hole in its head. How do you, how do you cover that up? It's not like you can take a little pistol, put it next to its paw. <laughs> Leave a little note. It says it could take the fleas anymore. It's right there. Just check the note. It's all in the note. So the barking bothers me because night is generally when I sleep. I'm a night sleeper. I love it. Sleep, I love it. I love it. Sleep, I love it. Sleep, I love it. I love to sleep. Man, I have dreams about taking naps. I love. And I'm one of these people, I have to have total silence, complete darkness, so I can't fall asleep at night. And I tell you something, you people who snore, you sandblasters of the night, you callers of the hogs, how? You people make these noises, these, where's this stuff come from? Yeah, and you're laying there in a comb with that constant reminder, I must sleep, you are not. I must sleep, you are not. I must sleep. Even the, even the dogs are outside, roll over! <laughs> and some of you, uh, if you're not snoring outright, you get this backward breathing, you're ready. That thing. Which I, never th which I never thought served a purpose until I noticed we never have to dust. Sleep in the other rooms, keep the whole house clean. Use your gift. That backward sucking, that's dangerous. It is, all I know is you leave a glass of water, you can create a tornado. Come on children, get the cell of your father snoring again. What about nothing, no, no. You ever hear that little thing they get, that little trick they get going with a hairball. Tail hanging out, it's horrible. Horrible thing. Horrible thing. I love that little trick though. I don't know what that is sometimes. I get that. What are you doing when you do that? What are, what are you shifting gears in sleep? Wake up later, I'm up. Man, that was the fastest I ever slept. 
Seven hours, 25 minutes. I'm getting really good at this sleeping thing. <laughs> Being married, though, I have discovered that uh, you never want to share a bed. You know, you don't want two snorers sleeping in the same bed. Then you have to race them to sleep. Oh, man, she beat me. Great. I have to get up and start banging stuff around to wake her up. Because you do not want to kick them or nudge them. You kick them or nudge them, they come back stronger somehow. It's like they sleep angry. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And she gets up in the morning, I didn't sleep all night. I didn't sleep much either. I was up all night kicking you. My wife, God love her, she's one of these human alarm clocks. Ever sleep with a human alarm clock? People, they get up before you, they lean over you. Get up, sleepyhead! Rise and shine, sleepyhead! It's morning, sleepyhead! You go, get up! Oh, yeah. Wrap in the forehead, you can sleep for five more minutes. I know how to shut them off, I just don't know how to set them. <laughs> you ever lay there at night too, just unable to sleep, you know? So you look at the clock, see how long it's been. So the next time you look at the clock, you'll know whether or not you should be angry or not. <laughs> no! I should be asleep by now! I'll give myself a half an hour! Oh, man. Tell you this, though, a lazy person can sleep for like 12 hours. They'll still, they'll still get upset when you wake them. And what'd you wake me for? Thought you wanted to ride home from work. <laughs> yeah, why, don't you, uh, why don't you mop up that drool for somebody gets workman's comp? <laughs> it's not so troubling that they fire you for sleeping on the job, but they, they wake you up to do it. <laughs> what are you doing? I got off. It was actually because of work that I started getting lazy. Work is the reason I got lazy. Because at work, I worked in an office where I had a, uh, a swivel chair with rollers. <laughs> if I wanted something over here, I could just go over here. I'm like, this is great, man. I was like, they should make baby walkers for adults. Then we could actually walk and sit at the same time. That would be sw and it'd be safer, you know. You get hit by a car, <laughs> just spin away. Sorry, man. It's okay. You just hit my bumper. I'm okay. I'm all right. Oh man, you missed on my counting beads. I don't know how many blocks I've walked. Thanks a lot. I'm lost now. <laughs> oh man. I never felt bad about being lazy until I had a wife. <laughs> and uh, a, wife of, a wife is God's way of kind of reviving your conscience. You know, then you start hearing this little voice every time you're lazy. You know, like when you, if you drop an ice cube when you kick it under the fridge. <laughs> Slacker be thy name. Who was that? Who said that? Well, unless you're barefoot, then you can just pick it up with your toes. There's that drink you wanted. There you go. Want me to make you a sandwich or something? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, that ice cube thing is such a big deal to my wife for some reason. Did you just kick an ice cube into the fridge? Yeah, what's the big deal? It's water. It's water! It's gonna get wet! The fridge is gonna... It's gonna... The condensation! It's gonna... It's gonna... If you keep doing that, they'll build up more! Uh, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> but that is pretty much the slacker's goal, is to uh, avoid movement, to avoid bending over. That's pretty much the goal. It's pretty pathetic. 
That's still pretty pathetic. I drop something, I'm like, ah! Now I have to bend over! I have to use my body! This is killing me! You know, God forbid if it rolls under something. And I have to decide if you even want the stupid thing or not. Yeah, it's only a wedding ring. So it's, what's that worth? 120 bucks? Slacker be thy name. It's just that little voice lets you know when you're off base. A little voice letting you know when you're off base, you know. For instance, you're filling your car up with gas. If you get mad because a little latch thingy's broke. No! Oh, I have to stand here and hold it. It's like having a job. Slacker be thy name. When you're eating a sandwich, you drop something on the floor. If you go, <laughs> just grab your dog by the back of his legs. Using like a little vacuum, <laughs> little Hoover Hound. Little little canine Kirby there. Instead of giving your dog a bath, if you just take one of those deodorant stick ups, put it right on his butt. Slack up be thy name. Put a little glycerine in his water. It's fresh at both ends. The only time you clean your apartment is when you want your deposit back. Slacka be thy name. Where is this voice coming from? You ever get caught being lazy on a date? That's embarrassing. I remember when my wife and I were first dating. I pick her up, right? I get in the car, and I notice she's standing outside her car door. Of course, I realize <laughs> she's too lazy to open her own door. <laughs> I'm glad I had power windows. It's open. <laughs> Pull the handle towards you. Pull it towards you. We're going to be late. I have to swing by home, pick up my baby walker for adults. I forgot it. And believe it or not, that woman married me. We, had, uh, we have children, which is amazing. Because I never thought I'd be one of those obnoxiously proud parents, which I am. You know, I remember when I was single and my first married friends had babies and they're always like, hold the baby, hold the baby. Like, I don't want to hold the baby. I was afraid I'll drop and have to bend over and pick it up. <laughs> Where's the baby? I kicked him under the fridge. Uh, don't worry, he's got an ice cube to suck on. He's fine. He's fine. The baby's fine. Oh. It's harder to be lazy these days because everyone in our culture is in such a hurry. Did you find that true? It is. That's it. So who invented multitasking? That's what I want to know. When I was a kid, you actually got scolded for multitasking. Stop it! You're doing two things at once! And now we brag about that. <laughs> we want things done quickly and hurry. The CEO of Domino's said, we don't sell pizza, we sell delivery. <laughs> well, that explains a lot about their taste, doesn't it, right there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, have you tasted their delivery? Whew. I did it so fast, I didn't notice. Mm. Shampoos are now combining shampoo and conditioner. Are we this pressed for time? When will my toothbrush already have toothpaste on it? Can someone invent underwear that just disintegrates? Can we just... <laughs> Why not take a deodorant stick up and just... No, okay. <laughs> call back, call back. Even fast food. Was fast food fast enough? No! We said, this is not fast enough! Someone needs to invent a window that we can drive by and that will just throw us a bag of food! <laughs> So the drive-thru was invented, so families could eat in vans as God intended. <laughs> we have to hurry up and get things done, or someone's going to beat us to it. There's just not enough hours in a day. 
When someone's talking to us, we do that thing. We nod, like hurrying them along. Come on, come on. Get your point across. I have things to do. I can't just spend my time listening to you. I'm not interested. I'm hurrying you along. I love this one. When we're, uh, we have to choose between two lines at the grocery store, you're coming up to the lines, and you have to choose between two lines. You choose one but you keep track of the person who would have been you, right? <laughs> you, want to, you want to see if you made the right decision in choosing this line? I, you beat me! And they're sitting over there, what, 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 what? <laughs> Some of us rush when there's absolutely no reason to rush. This. Hurry to bed! What? <laughs> How can you hurry to bed? Maybe if you didn't rush around all so much all day, you wouldn't be so ex uh, exhausted at night. <laughs> Whatever. Show me one place in the Gospels where Jesus hurried. Okay, next time somebody says to you, hurry up, say, I can't move faster than the one I'm following. <laughs> hey, you guys have been great. My name's Thor Ramsey. God bless you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. You've been great. Thanks a lot.